for 20 the last three games. And McGinnis had eight threes at Clemson, but in the lane is where he kills you, and he makes all of his teammates better. Take a look at the starting lineups first for the Tigers of Clemson. Dracunas, Christie, Weidman, and Greg Buckner you just talked about. He averages 13 points, five rebounds a game. And then the young freshman, Terrell McIntyre, is averaging 13 points and three rebounds a game. For Carolina, it's Jamison, made first team all-conference ACC. Elijah, Zwicker, Calabria, and Jeff McGinnis, who's averaging 16 points and two rebounds. He's the scoring leader, assist leader, best free throw shooter on the team. We'll have the opening tip for you right after these messages. Championship week continues. And we look at the starting five now for the Tigers of Clemson. Terrell McIntyre, their catalyst. He has been on a roll over the last five games of the regular season. Average 16 for the point guard spot. The little guy at 5'8" out of Rayford, North Carolina. Second season, Rick Barnes, as we mentioned, in the orange corner. And he's got that wry little smile on his face tonight. <laughs> he's ready to go. Jeff McGinnis, leading scorer, also leading in the assist for the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Their junior from Charlotte with Calabria, Ukalaja, Jamison, Dean Smith, his 35th year in North Carolina, losing five from last year's squad. It's rare when you see a Dean Smith squad with only a seven, eight man rotation, basically. But that North, is the case. North Carolina traditionally very deep, but then again, a lot of teams have experienced that with the 13 scholarship limit. There's not a lot of depth. Very many places around the country. Kentucky's the only place I can think of. Buckner hit it on the way up, and that's a violation. And North Carolina will start with the basketball. That's a good try. Aggressive early. <laughs> <laughs> now, in this Clemson starting lineup, you're looking at four freshmen and a sophomore. This is a very young Clemson team, one of the most productive freshman classes in the history of the ACC. They start in the man-to-man. -man. Jamison. Great block out by your Kunis against Zwicker. Zwicker away. Zwicker's a load to try to block away from the board. North Carolina starts in the man-to-man -man as well. Your Kunis is a young fellow who can shoot the ball from the perimeter, as can McIntyre. And McIntyre, as I mentioned, ran hot over the last five with the first three of the game. He comes in averaging 12 a contest on the season. McGinnis got his man in the air. And your Kunis again with the rebound. Clemson, a very tough squad on the defensive end. Very important that they block out and limit North Carolina's second chance opportunities. Buckner. He had the move. Got past Okalaja. Didn't capitalize. Nice pass. Jamison. Gets it. Count it. North Carolina does not run the transition game that they have run in past years. However, you've got to get back and get ready to play. And that time, Weidman just didn't get back in time. And Jamison, on a nice pass from Okalaja, took advantage of the fact that Weidman wasn't set on defense and got to the goal. So Weidman with the first foul of the game. Antoine Jamison, the freshman from Charlotte, can't convert the three-point play. Clemson is a team that'll run some time off the shot clock. They don't look for a slow down game. But if they don't have the break opportunity, they'll move the ball around. Pick and roll, your Kunis on the roll. Gets the three-pointer. The freshman from Lithuania giving Clemson a four-point lead early. He comes into the game as a 40% shooter from behind the arc. You cannot leave him alone out there. Good defense on the ball by the Tigers, making it difficult to see the passing lanes to the inside. McGinnis. Calabria for three. He nails it. One point game early. Calabria, that's his 73rd three point basket on the year. He also shoots at 40% from out beyond the arc. Did a nice job getting his feet set that time. 
Weidman. Oh, what a move! Move by Zwicker and doesn't finish it. Great move. Calabria. Almost a takeaway from McIntyre. They'll reset it with McGinnis. Zwicker asking for it. And a foul. Using the arm to fend off your Kunis. What a start for your Kunis. Your Kunis is much thinner. You can take a look at him. Now Zwicker on the defensive end. Watch this move by Weidman. The fake Zwicker goes for it. Weidman, however, doesn't get himself set. Calabria bothers him a little, and Weidman misses the shot. But your Kunis doing a great job using his quickness to get around in front of Zwicker. Zwicker pushed him away. That's a nice call. And when you give a 7-2, 275 pounder, a head and shoulder fake. Everybody takes notice. North Carolina drops back into his zone. This is Harold Jamison, number 32 for Clemson in the game. So we've got Jamison's all over and the place another, out there. Another freshman for Clemson in the game. Oh, nice shot Beautiful on the inside. Shot. Buckner got it away. A tough scoop shot in traffic. Buckner, the ACC Rookie of the Year last year, and he's had a very fine sophomore season. McGinnis against Christie. Okalaja. Your Kunis has already got three rebounds. He is staying at home on the glass. Oh! Christie McIntyre with the assist. And Clemson goes up by five. Their largest lead so far. Clemson comes in at 17 and 9. Don't forget, though, they started out at 11 and 0. McGinnis, you get three free throws. They're going to call the foul on your Kunis. Clemson not noted for their transition game, but Terrell McIntyre is a very, very good player in transition. Okalaza just loses his man, turns his head, and Christie gets to the basket. Nice job by McIntyre to find him. Three shots. Three shots. And your Kunis commits the foul. Your Kunis has fouled out of seven games this year, so he's prone to some foul problems. That time, he fouled McGinnis from beyond the three-point arc, so McGinnis will get three tries. Vince Carter has just checked into the game for North Carolina, a freshman from Ormond Beach, Florida. And a big guard of that at 6'5", 210 pounds. North Carolina's lineup with Zwicker out of the game gets smaller and quicker. Three free throws for McGinnis. Two-point ball game in the early going. Be right back in the ACC. Four minutes and ten seconds in. A couple of three-pointers early for Clemson. They've got a two-point lead over the Tariels of North Carolina. And Dan Bonner watching a couple of members of that all-freshman team for the ACC. An outstanding all-freshman team. Stephon Marbury, unanimous choice. Antoine Jameson, one vote short of a unanimous choice. You notice Terrell McIntyre from Clemson also in there, along with Courtney Alexander, who we saw in our last quarterfinal game, and Taman Dumzalski from Duke. But Antoine Jamison, just a tremendous offensive rebounder. His number's down a little bit on his second trip through the ACC as people, I think, sort of figured out that you've got to block this young man off the board because if you don't, he can kill you. 12 double-doubles this year, the most ever by a Carolina freshman. And the field goal percentage tops in the ACC. First to accomplish that as a rookie. So now, Terrell McIntyre. Working in the backcourt with Bill Harder, who checked in during the timeout. And, and with the, the trap. With a smaller, quicker team, North Carolina goes to the trap and forces the turnover. And Clemson does not turn the ball over very much. Calabria, tough. McIntyre in the air. Calabria draws the foul. Fortunately, nobody's hurt in the play. Dante Calabria, a very clever operator on the basketball court, gets McIntyre off his feet and then goes right into him. Surprised Calabria didn't throw it up at the basket. <laughs> the lob for Carter. Not bad timing at all. Vince Carter. Wow. Should get more than two for that. It's tied at ten. The entry for Buckner. 
and Clemson regains the lead. What a great job by Buckner operating inside. Okolaja just not quick enough to stay with Buckner. McGinnis giving it away right behind Jamison. A lot of traffic in the lane, and Vince Carter follows all the traffic and just gets up above everybody else. That is not an easy play to make. What a great catch by Carter. Clemson with the ball, a two-point lead, and hot from the floor early. Tigers 5 of 7 from the field. McIntyre makes it 6 of 8, and he's got a pair of three-pointers to boot. Five-point lead for the Tigers, matching their largest so far. And Clemson is a team in their ACC losses that generally didn't start very well. You can almost look at Clemson's record, and when they shoot the ball poorly to start the game, they lose the game, and when they shoot the ball well, they win. McGinnis on the fall away, and both teams getting off to good early starts offensively. That's a tough inside move by McGinnis. He's got a couple of inches on Bill Harder and took the ball in the lane. And Kunis ready to come back in, as well as Wicker. Jamison following Jamison. <laughs> So now, Harold Jamison going to the free throw line with the freshman from Van South Carolina. Harold Jamison is 6 feet 8, 260 pounds, and even though Antoine Jamison had a good run at him, it's awfully difficult to stop Harold Jamison that close to the basket. You can see as he lays on the floor, he looks up at Antoine Jamison. And I don't know that I'd want Harold Jamison looking at me that way. He's got some leverage. Size 17 shoe. 18-year-old, Holly Hill High School. 6'8", 240-pounder. I mean, you'd need at least a size 17 shoe on a frame like that. Not a bad pace at all. 63% free throw shooter. I think this young man is just going to have an outstanding career in the ACC. Oh, and Zwicker's in the lane early. Zwicker with the violation. So another try for Jamison. You can see it was pretty apparent. <laughs> it's like the old Globetrotters move. Clemson Can't. has now scored on seven of its first ten possessions, and they've got a five-point lead again. Can't hide anything from these cameras. Big Brother's always watching, especially above. Especially at the ACC tournament. <laughs> they've got about 837 cameras. Williams just in off the last whistle. McGinnis for three. Both teams red hot. Two-point ball game. Jeff McGinnis shoots 39% from three-point range. You can't afford to give him the that kind of an opening. Carter working out of the backcourt now is Weidman. Christie, the other guard, and McGinnis corrals it. Christie wasn't really ready to shoot when he caught that ball. McGinnis with the penetration, and it pays off. McGinnis seems to have come to this game ready to play. He's got 10 points, mostly on those slashing moves to the basket, although he does have the one three-pointer. 10 of the first 17 belonging to McGinnis. Yukunis. Setting it up for Jamison, who is fouled once again and finds his way back to the free throw line. It'll be on Zwicker. You've heard the term bullying your way to the basket. He does a great job getting position. Okolaja just stuck, and then he slides right between Zwicker and Okolaja. Those are not small people in there, and Jamison just bangs his way to the basket. Okolaja sits down. Antoine Jamison back in for the Tar Heels. I mean, pained expression on the face of Zerd Zwicker. 12.37 left in the first 20. Jamison will try to break the deadlock at 17. And misses both, but gives him another try at the offensive end. Great job by Buckner to tip that ball back. Jamison has that little hesitation in his shot. They all, there was almost another lane violation on that occasion. Here 
Kunis for three. And Weidman had the position, just mistimed it a little bit on his jump. Antoine Jameson with that board. Zwicker. Weak side Jameson. It was a pass from Zwicker all the way, wasn't it? We talked about his ability to rebound the ball offensively, and he showed it to you right there. Weidman went after the block. Nobody was left to block out against Antoine Jameson. Calabria now matched up against Buckner. Buckner is a guy who's capable of scoring an awful lot of baskets. Somebody you really need to pay attention to when Clemson's on the offensive end. Clemson trailing for the first time in the game. Eight and a half minutes in. Zwicker coming out of the double team. Shimon Williams tripped it away. Calabria leading the charge. Jamison from Williams. The trailer was there at a 9-0 run now for North Carolina, leading by four. North Carolina has been very aggressive on defense. Clemson hasn't had very many good looks since they started the game very quickly. Jamison battling and falling. Well, it was Jamison against Jamison once again. And this time it was Antoine that won out. So Carolina will have the ball when we come back with 10.54 left in a very spirited first half. And North Carolina on a roll, leading by four. Happy with us on the deuce. Now, Clemson is starting to consider it a rivalry with North Carolina. North Carolina may have other ideas. They've taken five straight. 13 out of the last 14 for the Tigers. They only lead it 100 to 14. <laughs> North Carolina is a big rivalry for everyone else in the ACC simply because the Tar Heels have been at the top of the pack for so long. Everybody likes to get ready they have to get up so they can play against North Carolina. But this Clemson team, even though they have lost 37 times in a row to North Carolina in the state of North Carolina, they feel like they can play with this squad. This is a talented young Clemson team. McGinnis, the hot hand for the Tar Heels. He's got 10 already. Six for Antoine Jameson. Clemson comes out in a zone defense. First time we've seen the Tigers in a zone. McGinnis for three. And the patience pays off in the half-court set. 13 now for Jeff McGinnis. He averages 16 a game coming in little two-man game with Calabria and McGinnis results in a wide open three-point basket and McGinnis continues to play very very well early in this game the run is at 12 and counting now for North Carolina they lead it by seven Weidman over Zwicker that's a tough tough shot and you'll notice North Carolina doing a great job on the defensive boards no second opportunities for Clemson Shaman Williams the freshman, or make it the sophomore, rather, from Greenville, South Carolina, forces Clemson into a 20-second timeout. Back-to-back -back threes. Dante Calabria does an awful lot of things for North Carolina. This time he penetrates into the zone and then kicks it back to Jeff McGinnis and then off the fast break. Shimon Williams has the wide open three, and Williams is another guy in that North Carolina lineup that can hit the three-point shot. Williams comes in, another 40% shooter from three-point range, and he drilled that one. 15 unanswered points for Dean Smith's squad now. They lead it by 10. Siobhan Williams with spark off the bench. Not only hitting that basket, we saw him on the break as well, finding the trailer, Antoine Jameson, on a beautiful play. Well, as we saw in our first quarterfinal game of the night, you can stay in the game playing defense, but if you're going to really make a move, you've got to get the ball to go in the basket once in a while, and Clemson hasn't scored in a couple of minutes. Most of this run came with Terrell McIntyre on the bench. He is now back in the contest for Clemson. Clemson would like to get Buckner more involved in the offense. Buckner, the leading scorer. Christie. So Christie stops the streak at 15, the freshman from Hartford. And that is the first points for Clemson in the last four and a half minutes. Inside of nine minutes left in the first half, and Calabria is walking with it. 
Dante Calabria walked on that particular play, but Calabria's doing an outstanding job against Greg Buckner. Calabria not giving Buckner any room to breathe. This is just tremendous defensive effort by Dante Calabria, and if Buckner has to work that hard and never touches the ball, he may very well get frustrated. Christie. Man, little McGinnis doing a good job underneath. Great block out by McGinnis. North Carolina really doing the job on the boards. Ball underneath. Zwicker is going to pick up his third. He can't believe it. After the miss by Javon Williams. Zwicker very upset with that call. Vince Carter will come back in. Zwicker comes in here, and that's the foul call right there over the back of Jamison, and I think the reason Zwicker's upset is as that play ended, Jamison got him in the face with the elbow, so Zwicker's feeling a little put upon here. The foul's called on him, and he wants to know what was it. I hit him with, hit him in the elbow with my face? It's a tough way to get a foul. Now there's your Kunis picking up the foul on the illegal screen. Tried to set the pick, kept moving. Second on your Kunis. This has been an outstanding effort deep on defense by the North Carolina Tar Heels. They are not letting Clemson get comfortable in their offensive sets. Everything for Clemson thus far has, after that initial run where the Tigers started the game, everything for the Tigers has been contested. Carter off the bench. Jamison following. Antoine Jamison again, and he's got eight. He just outstrapped Buckner for the ball. 6'8", 215-pound freshman. Tar Heels in control by 10 again. The story of the game, North Carolina has gotten easier opportunities. McIntyre. He's got another three. And that is the third three for Terrell McIntyre. They needed it. McGinnis, helped by Buckner. Rick Barnes trying to help the officials right there, claiming it is Clemson ball. Of course, he doesn't have the most objective view of the situation. Time out on the floor. Seven-point lead for North Carolina, 7.42 left of the first half. Incredible first half offensively for North Carolina, hitting just about everything they've put up. 7.42 left in the first 20. Tar Heels by seven. And don't forget, a little bit later tonight on the news, a WAC semifinal matchup. And that is Keith Van Horn at number 10, Utah, taking on the Rams of Colorado State. Stick around, 11.30 on the East Coast, right here on the Deuce. The WAC semifinal in Albuquerque. We talked about a sensational freshman at the start of the contest, and Antoine Jamison has not let us down. He has stayed around the basket. He's got eight already. He's doing the little things, constantly moving without the ball. He's very difficult. He's so active. He's extremely difficult to get a body on and block him out. And as I said, unless you do, he's going to score a lot of points. He's got four of his points directly as a result of offensive rebounds this evening. North Carolina has hit 65% of their shots already, 53% for Clemson. Still, they're down by seven. In the first matchup between these two teams, North Carolina shot over 60% for the game and came away with a big, big win. And there's Antoine Jamison again, tipping the ball in the basket. He is always moving around the rim. He's got 10. The lead is at 9. Buckner, not many touches, as you pointed out. Buckner calling for the ball inside. This time he's matched up against Okalaja, and he's going to draw the foul and hit the basket. We showed you that replay where he couldn't get the ball against Calabria. The switch on defense, Okalaja a little bigger, Buckner a little quicker, and Buckner using his quickness to convert right there. Buckner takes the baseline. Okalaja just slips that hand in there and hits him on the elbow going up. You know, if you're going to commit a foul, you better get your money's worth. And he's pointing at his head saying, well, i got to think about it a little bit. Not a very smart play. Buckner very hot coming into the tournament. Okalaja there with the rebound. Can't convert on the three-point play. Stays at a seven-point deficit. Buckner has averaged 22 over the last three before the start of the postseason tournament. That included a 30-point performance against Duke, his career best. And again, Jamison acrobatically finding a way to get it in. 
He's that, got a dozen. That was an excellent pass by Okalaja. We talked about Jamison's ability to move without the ball. We talked about his quickness for a guy his size. What he's going to show you on this particular play as he gets in good position once again is strength as he powers the ball up past Buckner's foul. Very pleased with the pass from Okalaja. First foul on Buckner. And Christie with the rebound. Buckner calling for the clear out aggressively. And the foul is going to be on Carter. Once again, Buckner using his quickness against against Okalaja, beating Okalaja to the basket. Buckner, one of those guys who can create his own shot. You can't deny a guy who's dribbling the ball. He can't keep the ball away from him. He just powers it to the basket. Coming right at you now as he gets past Okalaja. The defensive help comes over, but Carter gets him with the body and knocks him down. Buckner shooting two. He had a teammate in the neighborhood. And with the leadership, very quickly told him isolation out of the way. The sophomore from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, hits the free throws. That's an advantage that on the offensive end, if Buckner can get Okalaja away from the basket a little bit, the advantage is all to Buckner. Here Clemson with a little half-court trap, 1-2-2. Two, two. They get back very quickly on defense because North Carolina, with their three-point shooting ability, can really bother this kind of a move. The spin by McGinnis. Make it 15 already in the first half for Jeff. McGinnis has that move down pat. A little spin into the lane. He's now five of six from the field. Where the Jamisons going at one another. Great catch. Carter's going to pick up, or excuse me, Antoine Jamison is going to pick up the foul against Harold Jamison. McIntyre just a little late with the pass, and Harold Jamison did a nice job tracking it down. Harold Jamison is ready. He wants the ball battling against Antoine Jamison. Does a nice job coming over, preventing the entry pass right there. But now Harold Jamison stays with it, sets the screen, turns, goes to the basket. McIntyre a little late finding him, and then the tough catch and the foul committed by Antoine Jamison. Siobhan Williams back into the game. Vince Carter sits down. And Jamison. With Clemson now in the bonus situation. 5.50 left in the first 20. And the difference thus far in the game, Joel, was that North Carolina spurt. Clemson won a couple of minutes without scoring, and North Carolina scored 12 in a row. With another free throw, Clemson only down by seven, despite the fact North Carolina has hit almost 70% of their shots in the half. Weidman back in, Harold Jamison, well-deserved break. McGinnis and Antoine Jamison, the catalyst offensively early for the Tar Heels. Shimon Williams off the bench has been a spark as well. Calabria. And Weidman with the shove on Antoine Jamison, and now the bonus situation for the Tar Heels as well. Second foul on Weidman. Tom Weidman trying to block out Antoine Jameson, and that's a pretty good way to do it, but you can't do it right in front of the official. Tried it in front of Dick Paparo, Carl Hess, and Zelton Steve, the other two officials. 5.36 left in the half. Jameson only a 55% free throw shooter, did not look good on that particular play, and Clemson with an opportunity to cut it to five. Now here's that matchup we talked about, Buckner against Okalaja. Okalaja doing a better job that time, moving his feet. Here Kunis, already with a three-pointer. Shot clock down to seven, and Buckner will take it on his own. Weidman kept it alive and deflected it off the fingertips of McGinnis. And Harold Jamison coming back now for Clemson. And one thing that has to concern Clemson coach Rick Barnes is that his squad has not been able to get claimed very many offensive rebounds. That was a nice job by Yurkunis battling for the ball. But Rick Barnes, his squad only with one offensive rebound. Dangerous inbounds play. North Carolina in his zone. Got to watch for the trap. 
They beat it with a good pass. And Jamison finishes. Nice pass from Christie. Excellent recognition by Christie. He stopped, made the pass, rather than try to power the ball to the basket. Clemson right back after trailing by as many as 10. Back within five. Antoine Jamison won't get the little shovel. What a great job by Okalaji to tip the ball away from Buckner. Keep it alive for the offensive rebound. Yerkunas has just committed his third foul. Bad news for Clemson fans. Yerkunas leads the Clemson Tigers in fouls. He has 88 fouls. We mentioned seven disqualifications. And he's going to have to come out of the game. But that was that, the whole play was created by Okalaja and his hustle on the offensive board. And North Carolina's offensive rebounding has been a, as big a story, in my opinion, in this first half as their how you know their effectiveness from on, on the offensive efficiency, their effectiveness in field goal shooting. Calabria now with four after hitting the early three-pointer. The senior from Beaver Falls, averaging just about 13 a game. It stays at four. The lead is up to six. Tire caught in air. Buckner got away from Okalaja and uses the glass. And that's the matchup they'd like to use more often. Down to a four-point deficit for Clemson. Nice job by Clemson to get Buckner involved in the offense. They've got an opportunity. He's got 10 points now. They feel like they have a mismatch, and they've done a great job taking advantage of it. The lob and an errant one. Okalaja forcing it inside. McIntyre, nifty jump stop, but blocked. Okalaja getting back inside defensively to bat it away, but a nice little run now for Clemson. Tigers down by only four as Buckner has been back in the offense for the Tigers. Three forty-four left in the first half. One dominated by North Carolina early, but Clemson coming back after trailing by as many as ten. It's only a four-point deficit now for the Tigers. And don't forget to join us. Selection special along with Chris Fowler, Digger, and Dickie V. It'll start just before six thirty Eastern, and then presented by State Farm. It'll be the women's selection special right after the men's tourney selection special. And obviously, with a seventeen and eleven mark coming in, Dan Bonner, a very important one tonight for Rick Barnes and many feel if they can beat North Carolina, get to the semifinal. They are in the NC2A tournament. One of the things that the selection committee looks at is the strength of your schedule. And Rick Barnes knew coming in that he was going to have a very tough team. And so even though his schedule this year is a little stronger than it was last year, it wasn't really a very tough schedule. And they did very well with it. But now that they've performed so well, 7-9 and nine in the ACC, I really think if they get this win tonight, the tournament selection committee is going to have a hard time keeping them out. Christie for three. And the foul on Christie. Going after the loose one. Loose one. As Jamison kept it alive. Harold Jamison for Clemson. Okalaja will go to the free throw line. A freshman from Germany. Born in Lagos, Nigeria. I got you, short 13. Foul on Christie. That is his first. The bonus situation for the Tar Heels. Other scores, Fresno State in Albuquerque by a point early in the second half over New Mexico. Another team right there on the edge, Jerry Car Tarkanian's Fresno State Bulldogs. A team that has beaten Utah twice this year. Back to a five-point lead. Okalaja getting one of two. And all of a sudden, out of the timeout, Calabria back on Buckner. Will it make a difference? Yes. That's great defense by Calabria. Really forced Buckner into a tough shot. Buckner reaching around the Guinness. Call by the official from behind, and that's why the Clemson fans are going into the background. Calabria, we've shown before the job that he has done inside on Buckner. Makes it difficult for Buckner to catch the ball. He's in great position. Gets a hand up in the face. Now down on the other end, Buckner's going for the steal, tries for the tap away, is called for the foul. That's the 10th team foul against Clemson. So two free throws the rest of the way now. For the Tar Heels, Jeff McGinnis at the line. 
And Jeff McGinnis is already on his season average of 16 a game. That's his 16th point. Rick Barnes not very pleased with that last call. Obviously not very pleased that Jeff McGinnis is putting up these kind of numbers in the first half, but they have not been able to guard McGinnis and Antoine Jameson very effectively. And we're just coming out of a quarterfinal matchup where we saw a splendid display of defensive sets from the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest in particular. And it wasn't like Virginia was playing poorly at the defensive end either. It stays in the hands of Clemson. Joel, the Tar Heels have 39 points. They lead it 39 to 32. Of those 39 points, Antoine Jameson and McGinnis have combined to score 29. Talk about a two-man game. Well, it's been a, more than a two-man game on the defensive end. North Carolina has done a nice job on the defensive end. Buckner over Calabria. Well, from an air ball to a flat one, but the putback is there for Harold Jamison. And has he ever been a spark off the bench? He just bowled his way to the basket against Okalaji and Vince Carter. And with both Antoine Jamison and Serge Wicker on the bench, not much muscle inside for North Carolina, but that three-point shot, still an effective weapon in the Carolina arsenal. And the second of the contest for Shimon Williams, who now has six. Carolina by eight. And the Tar Heels with the big 12-0 spurt earlier in the half on a little bit of a spurt right now. Carolina devastating behind the uh, line. Five of eight on those three-pointers. Okalaju shoving Jamison from behind. This has been a tough first half for Okalaju when he's been matched up against Buckner. Buckner's gone right around him. Now he's trying Harold Jamison and not having any better luck there. At the half with Reese Davis in the studio. Semifinal matchup. The Atlantic 10. George Washington has, has taken the last four straight from the Minutemen of UMass. Kittles, Iverson, Big East confrontation. And Rice and Texas Tech. Texas Tech, one of the best kept secrets in the nation. Reese Davis with all the highlights at the half. Minute 48 left in the first 20 minutes of play. Seems like Harold Jamison has been to the line a good number of times, fortunately, for the Clemson Tigers. Gets one of two there. Okalajua all tied up with Buckner. McGinnis doesn't get the roll for one of the few times, but gets the foul. We're going to have a foul first, and unfortunately, we'll have to see who the foul is called against. Vince Carter is okay. down hard. Fortunately, appears to be all right, and his body truly contorted. The foul is called against Bill Harder. Harder steps in, and now watch as Bill Harder backs up to try the block out. He pushes and goes right underneath Vince Carter, trying to keep him out of the lane. And so Bill Harder is going to pick up the foul. Then the ball hits. This is a tough play for Carter. Harder knocks him down. He falls on his head. The ball hits him in the face, and then that was Buckner fell down on top of him. If he can make these two free throws, <laughs> he's one sturdy young man. Freshman from Florida. It actually looked like Harder fouled McGinnis, but Vince Carter deserves the free throws. No <laughs> doubt about that. Carter was trying to block out against Vince Carter, and he moved into him as Carter jumped up in the air, knocked his feet out from under him. And it's a nine-point lead. And that's one tough customer, huh? Showed some poise, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> Largest lead of the half has been at 10 for Carolina. Zone defense now for the Tar Heels. And Clemson doesn't want to make any mistakes right here. Harder taking at the distance, can't finish it. Okalaja knocks it out of there. They're going to give it to North Carolina. Great penetration. Harder did everything but get the basket. Get those kind of opportunities again, North Carolina in the ACC tournament in a game you're looking for the upset. You better convert them, Joel. Especially the way North Carolina is hitting and such a high percentage from the floor. Well, they're getting great Guinness. shots. The putback, Vince Carter. Buckner just didn't block him out. North Carolina on the offensive boards. That's been a big story in this first half. Maybe somebody needs to deck Vince earlier in the game. <laughs> <laughs> he is alive. The 
The takeaway by Shaman Williams leading the break. He walked. And that's really a break for Clemson. North Carolina threatening another little spurt that'll blow the game open as we go to halftime. The jump shot by McGinnis. A couple of guys go out to cover McGinnis, and Vince Carter just leaps up. No block out on the inside by Buckner. Anticipated, timed it perfectly. In this particular defense, North Carolina wants to make sure that they don't give up any three-point baskets. Of course, they don't want to give up any twos either, but they don't want to give them any uncontested three-point shots. Lead, the largest it's been the entire contest now for North Carolina at 11. Shot clock. They're going to call Carter on the foul. No shot, foul on the floor. Calling for a hand check. So McIntyre going to the free throw line. Reaches in and grabs him as he starts by. For Vince Carter. That is his second foul. Zwicker back now with three fouls with 2.7 seconds left. Now with the way Carter has played, they want to make sure he does not pick up his third foul. The one and one. Terrell McIntyre trying to become only the third freshman in ACC history to lead in both scoring and assists on his team. Mark Price and Johnny Dawkins, the only other two. As we saw in our first quarterfinal matchup, 2.7 seconds is long enough to get the ball to half court and let one go. Mr. Braswell reminded us of that. It's a nine-point ball game on the two free throws by McIntyre. Shimon Williams, will they get it off in time? Yes. No dramatics at the end of this first half, though. But a very solid start for North Carolina, to say the least. They were on fire the entire first half offensively, and they go to the locker room, leading by nine. It's a nine-point North Carolina lead. Bucky, how about the game plan for the second half? Well, the Tigers are the only team in the league to beat both number one seed Georgia Tech and number two Wake Forest, and they've done it with defense. Tonight, the defense is good, but they've got to limit the heels to one shot. They're getting killed off that offensive board, and the heels have got to take it inside. Game for the Tar Heels. Shimon Williams, though, has done a sensational job coming off the bench for North Carolina, and Clemson will start with the ball to start the second half. Joel... Jameson and McGinnis have 29 points, but they had 29 of 39, and North Carolina now has 46, so other people scored the last seven points of the half for the Tar Heels. Weidman keeps it alive, comes out to Antoine Jameson. That is a great play by McIntyre. A deflection. They have the numbers. Buckner over Zwicker. Early release, the key. Seven-point deficit. Clemson, first two of the second half. A dozen now for Buckner. Christie starts the second half, matched up against McGinnis. Man-to-man oh. -man for Clemson. Mismatch. And Calabria lost it on his way up. He thought he was fouled by McIntyre. The foul is on McGinnis, and the basket counts. What a turnaround. Great start to the second half for the Clemson Tigers. If you're Rick Barnes, this is the way you want your team to come out of the blocks. McIntyre made the steal down on the other end and just powers the ball to the basket. He's a little guy, but he's very well built, and he gets, gets the ball up, and he's very pleased with the result. He goes to the line. Trying for the three-point play if he gets it. It'll be the first five points of the second half along into the Tigers. And that is the case. They're quickly back within four. As North Carolina is still looking for their first points of the second half. North Carolina's turned it over two times in the second half. It's tough to score if you're not going to shoot the ball. The spin by McGinnis. Okalaja for three. What a stroke. Okalaja is a good three-point shooter. 
Now he's above 50% from the three-point line on the year. Came in at 17 for 34. Can't leave him alone out there. Big basket. His first three of the contest. He's got four down. That is a big basket. Five to nothing. Spurt to start the half for Clemson. Weidman backdoor cut McIndyre. <laughs> Little guy goes back door, gets the ball past Zwicker. McGinnis for three. Okolaja losing it on the baseline. It's going to be off his knee and back to Clemson. Let's check in with Gary Danielson. Gary? The story in the halftime adjustments for Clemson has been rebounding both offensively and defensively. You know how tough it is to block out these North Carolina forwards, but they have to slow the game down. They said they have to hold North Carolina to 30 points in the second half in the 30s to win. All right, Gary. Well, defensively, that is the key for Clemson after North Carolina hit an almost 60% clip in the first 20. Two and a half minutes into the second half. McIntyre, great pass. Weidman doesn't finish it. But the ball is given away again already. The third turnover early in the second half by North Carolina. That's the second time that Weidman has had an opportunity inside and just been a little short with it. Very important when you get opportunities like that that you convert a high percentage of them. This is just a great pass. You've got to step in at 6 feet 10. You've got to power that ball to the basket. North Carolina throws it away, so Clemson gets a break right there. Weidman sits down. Harold Jamison comes back in now for Clemson. North Carolina in the zone defense, and in the zone defense last season, North Carolina's opponents doing a great job shooting the ball from beyond the three-point arc. The opposition hitting better than 40% beyond the three-point line. Buckner. And what a put back by Christie. Buckner draws so much attention, the zone collapses. <laughs> Nobody was available for Christie, and Clemson has it back to a three-point game. They trailed by as many as 11 in the first half. They're on a 9-3 run to start the second half. And Calabria fouled by McIntyre on the reach-in. Buckner is a guy who is, when he has been around the basketball on offense, good things have happened. Three guys go to him. Nobody's left for Christie, and Christie with the nice cup and the slam. Good looking cup. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Did he hang? Calabria for three. On target. He has a way of hitting big shots in a basketball game. Now he's matched up against McIntyre. Terrell McIntyre at about five feet eight, trying to match up against Dante Calabria. Calabria has the advantage. He ought to be able to get the shot off. Doesn't want to dribble it too much because McIntyre is pretty quick. There's Buckner again getting the ball inside. This time he's fouled by McGinnis. Dante Calabria does a great job coming off the screen, catching the basketball, and making a big basket for North Carolina. Well, it wasn't really much of a screen. Okolaja just pushed. That was Buckner just pushed him out of the way. Kept moving, and Buckner loses it on his way in. It's back to the Tar Heels. Six-point lead for North Carolina after the clutch three by Calabria. His second of the game, he's got seven now. He averages 13 a contest. McGinnis got Christie into the air. Couldn't capitalize. Buckner with a deflection. McIntyre waiting for it. And Calabria altered that one. Foul. On the rebound, it'll be on Okolajo. Dante Calabria with great, great hustle. Those are things that don't go in the scorebook, but Calabria saved two sure points right there. Couldn't capitalize. Calabria got back in time, and North Carolina still with a six-point lead. Down by nine at the break. The Tigers are back within six, and Clemson will have the ball when they put it back into play with 15.52 left in the second half. Don't forget the ACC semifinals tomorrow afternoon on ESPN. Maryland going up against Georgia Tech in the first one. Then a Wake Forest to winner earlier tonight on the Deuce, taking on the winner of this matchup between North Carolina and Clemson. With plenty of turnovers early in the second half for North Carolina after a very clean and efficiently played first half. Where the two teams only at five and four. Five for North Carolina, four for Clemson. 
But North Carolina giving it away already that many times. And we're not five minutes into the second half. North Carolina in the zone defense, and Yurkunis finds the open spot, buries the three. We just talked about the three-point shooting range that the opponents have had against this North Carolina zone defense in the latter stages of the season. Yurkunis with the bucket. Clemson now five of nine from three-point territory as Calabria almost gave it away for the sixth time in this half already. McGinnis can't answer with a three, and it's poked out to McIntyre. Good job by Yurkunis, keeping Zwicker away. The trailer is Buckner. Quick one for Christie. The battle won by Carolina. McGinnis in the transition has it deflected. McIntyre's got it. Here we go on a three-on-one. McIntyre the distance. Got to stop the ball, Joe. And, folks, we've got a one-point ball game. Javon Williams ready to come off the bench for the Tar Heels. Clemson has outscored Carolina now 14 to 6. First five plus minutes of this half. And the story has been North Carolina turnovers. Antoine Jamison, very effective all night long. 8 to 10 feet away from the basket. Now you can't turn the ball out over out on the perimeter and get it to Jamison. You can do one of the two, and unfortunately for the Tar Heels, their turnovers have really affected their offensive pace here in the second half. Your Kunis, they don't come get him. Boy, he that's a long shot. There. That's NBA range, and it is all tied up at 54. And you know, this young Clemson team, the longer they hang in a game like this, the more and more confident they become. Using the glass, Antoine Jamison around the basket again. Back to a two-point lead. Jamison now with 16, McGinnis 17 for North Carolina. But you talked about it earlier, Dan. No lineup in college basketball younger than the Clemson Tigers. Four freshmen and a sophomore. McGinnis has been quiet offensively in the second half, but Clemson still yet to find the answer for Antoine Jamison. Jamison needs help. Throws it off Zwicker. Heads up play. Your Kunis bombing an away. Three-point shooter. <laughs> He's way behind the line. That's a set shot right there. Now the bench has to remind the five of the floor for Clemson. They've only got ten left on the shot clock. Zwicker will sit down. Smaller lineup now. Smaller lineup and look for North Carolina to trap with the smaller lineup. Wide it back in for Clemson. Christie using the glass. Oh, what a great play. explosion to the basket by Christie. Brought that one up from the holster. It's tied at 56. Great pass by Shamad Williams finding Jamison, who never leaves home, does he? He's always around the rim. Doing a great job moving without the ball, making himself available, and he converts when he catches it down there. Jamison, 9 of 11 from the floor. And all of those shots, very high percentage ones. Buckner backing it out. McIntyre beat Williams out front. Great job by Clemson to pull all the help away, and then McIntyre uses his quickness to get to the goal. Terrell McIntyre, who has a 12-point average over the course of the regular season, 20 already tonight. Jamison has it poked away by Yerkunis. Carolina bench wanted a foul. They don't get the call. They've been letting them play all tournament. Not just this game. That time Yerkunis came and gave great help. Jamison in good position. Weidman needed the help, and he got it. Eight minutes into the second half. Don't go anywhere. Tied at 58. All right, Reese, a great one going on right now. Fresno State on the home floor, the Lobos of New Mexico, and a super one in the ACC tourney as well. Clemson and North Carolina tied at 58. Carolina giving the ball away regularly to help the cause of Clemson. Calabria, he's been hot from three. He's short that time. Jamison almost had it. And Jamison fouled by Yurkunis. That'll be the fourth on Yurkunis. And Yurkunis has been a big factor with a couple of three-point baskets in the second half. And once again, there's Antoine Jamison around the basket. 
Jamison doing a great job positioning himself. He just gets his position in the lane and holds it. Weidman gets one block, but Yurkunas comes in over the back. Just a great job by Jamison to get his position, to have the strength to maintain it. Four offensive rebounds now for Antoine Jamison to go along with his 18 points and seven rebounds overall. Tries to break the deadlock at the strike. And it's a one-point lead for Carolina. And with as well as North Carolina has shot the basketball, they've missed very few times, and it seems like when they do miss, Jamison's there to claim the offensive rebound. It stays at a one-point advantage. He's only a freshman, and he does not mind banging it about down low. Really a hard worker. Buckner had the edge on the baseline, uses the glass, oh. and line drives it. That was a rope. Clemson with the lead by a point. Vince Carter comes right back quickly for Carolina. The last lead for Clemson. They led it by a point at 60 to 59, had been at 17-15. North Carolina just beat him down the court. North Carolina back into man-to-man. -man. Calabria now matched once again against Buckner. Christie. It'll go back to Carolina. And Jeff McGinnis off the bench very quickly. Okolaja also coming in. Dante Calabria once again bounces Buckner outside. Calabria is a very physical player. And now Calabria does a great job getting through that screen. Buckner motioning to the official. That's just good hard-nosed defense by Calabria. Plenty of movement without the ball. Okolaja doesn't get it. Weidman after it. And the foul coming up on Vince Carter. Three fouls now on Vince Carter. That's a tough break. He was scrambling after the ball. Just a little out of position. Got himself tangled up with Weidman. Jamison gets his hand on the ball. <laughs> Carter, he just has his arm caught in there with Weidman. That's a tough way to pick up a foul. You know, if you get a foul, you'd like to get your money's worth. And you don't get your money's worth on a foul like that. Bill Harder back in now, taking over for Tony Christie in the backcourt for Clemson. And here's the North Carolina zone once again. Carol Jamison. Buckner got Swicker into the air momentarily and capitalizes. Boy, what a quick move by Buckner. He's now got 16 points in the game. And Clemson regains the lead by a point at 62-61 as we approach the halfway mark of the second half. And I don't think so coincidentally, Dante Calabria up off the bench and back at the scorer's table. A foul is going to be on McIntyre. That foul's called against Terrell McIntyre, and good recognition by Jeff McGinnis. Tony Christie has been matched up against McGinnis defensively for most of the second half. McGinnis now recognizes the smaller McIntyre, and so he just takes the ball right into the lane. Buckner very nearly coming up with the steal, but McGinnis taking the ball in the lane against the smaller player. Zwicker sitting down Antoine Jamison after his short break. Back off the bench. McGinnis backing in on Harder, just like he did on McIntyre. The size advantage is there once again, and the charge, will it be Noah Block? They say Harder didn't get to the spot in time. Again, matched up against the smaller opponent. McGinnis is just tough to guard, and he's got his head and shoulders passed. Harder. And you know, once an underdog stays this close with the favorite, a lot of the fans in this arena, Williams hits that one. They sort of go over to the side of the Clemson Tigers, so a lot of people very upset with that call. Williams now has eight. He is coming off a career best to the clutch bucket there. They give Carolina one point lead. He's coming off a career best in their win over Duke last Sunday. Now McIntyre. 
good position. Okalaja took Jamison completely out. Calabria for three. The quick release. Four-point lead, Tar Heels. Timeout. And it'll be a 20. Jeff McGinnis with the penetration. You've got to respect the penetration. And Dante Calabria, we talked about his ability to hit big threes. That gives North Carolina a four-point lead. Calabria has 10 now. He averages 13 as both teams hitting at least 50% from three-point land. And Calabria hasn't forced a thing today. Both teams are scoring very effectively. The shooting percentage is very, very high in this game. Where North Carolina has struggled in the second half, it's, it's when they've turned the ball over, and it seems as if they can avoid turnovers, that they can get to points any time they need them. Clemson at 54% for the game, North Carolina at 61% for the game. And you can see the second half numbers even higher. Inside of nine minutes left. Carolina with a five to nothing run now. Clemson's, or North Carolina's made this little run with Tony Christie on the bench. He's getting ready to come back as well as your Kunis with four fouls. Buckner had a glass or a shot off the glass and we're going to get a foul on Weidman coming up at the back. That'll be his third. And now they can bring in your Kunis and Christie. The last time that Buckner attempted this shot, he line-drived it in on that particular occasion, a little short, and Weidman gets the foul coming over the back. Yurkunas, who's coming into the game for Weidman as he leaves with his third personal foul, Yurkunas has four personal fouls. Now, here's Christie back in the game, and I think one of the keys to the second half in disrupting the North Carolina offense was Christie's defensive effort against McGinnis. Jamon Williams. Boy, he's, he's got had the a stroke. Game. He's got the stroke. He's got 10 now. Talked about the career best 19 he had in the second half with a career best 26 last Sunday at Duke. Eight minutes remaining. Carolina by six. McIntyre. The penetration was exceptional. Yerkunis can't get it. We've got a rebounding foul. It'll be on the Tar Heels. Looks like Antoine Jameson's yes. going to pick it up. It appears that if Clemson is going to win this basketball game, they're going to have to outscore North Carolina. As Shimon Williams demonstrates right there, the Tar Heels, the Tar Heels really scoring very effectively. It's going to be tough with it's not North gonna Carolina be a, not still gonna be, hitting. Not going to be decided by defense. First half of play is North Carolina led it at the break by nine. Their offensive output basically dominated by two players, Jeff McGinnis and also Antoine Jameson. But Dante Calabria and Sh Shimon Williams really coming on down the stretch. One of the keys has been that Clemson has missed its last four shots, and North Carolina is seemingly making all the big baskets. And when I say that Clemson has to outscore them, well, obviously they have to outscore them. they got to get more points to win the game. But this is a situation where it doesn't appear that Clemson is going to win this game with defensive play. They're going to have to do it on the offensive end. And they can't go through a drought, or at least a very long one, and they're in a bit of a drought right now. Especially with Carolina hitting at 60% from the floor still. They're making some clutch, clutch baskets. Yerkunis for three. He has come through in the clutch before for them. It's and back to a three-point deficit. And that is a clutch basket. Four for four from three-point range. Remember, Yerkunis has four personal fouls, however. Man-to-man -man for Clemson. Inside of seven minutes to play, McGinnis over Christie. And that's what I'm talking about with big baskets. Christie's right in his face. What a clutch three-pointer. McGinnis now with 20, three three-pointers. They're not just hitting 60% from the field. Overall, they are, obviously, but almost better than 60%, yes, from three-point range as well. Buckner, tough angle. Jamison, another one. Both Jamisons for the Tar Heels and the Tigers. They've been hanging out at home, doing a good job of the boards. 
Got to get some defensive stops. Shaman Williams, they wanted to walk. They don't get it. Your Kunis almost came up with it. Down to 10 on the shot clock. McGinnis around Christie for the easy one. Christie went for the steal, and McGinnis just beat him to the basket. Tar Heels by six once again. Until Clemson can figure out a way to stop North Carolina on defense, Clemson is, the pressure's really on the Tigers. They've got to score every time down. Christie beating McGinnis on the baseline. McGinnis with a reach in. Let's not forget about the job that Dante Calibri has done defensively on Buckner since he went back to taking Buckner. Okolajo had him earlier in the half. We've got another timeout on the floor. And it's going to be a 20 taken by the Tar Heels. 25 left in the contest. Both teams now have used their 20-second timeouts. Both teams' phenomenal field goal percentages, especially Carolina. North Carolina seemingly, as we said, making all the big baskets. Just a tremendous offensive effort. Jeff McGinnis having a big game. Shimon Williams off the bench. He's made some clutch buckets. Dante Calabria has made some clutch buckets. Tar Heels have hit their last five shots, and it's tough to catch up with somebody if they're going to make all their shots. And that really puts some pressure on you. If the other team's scoring, you're behind in the game, the clock is winding down, then you really feel like you got to score. Christie, short on the three. Your Kunis off the mark, and Williams getting a big rebound. minutes left. Buckner now going to try his luck on McGinnis. Williams for three. Calabria collects it and keeps it alive. Okolaja off the knees of Yorkunas and a fresh 35. And I don't know the why there's a fresh 35. 35. That's right. It never touched the rim. They reset the shot clock. Now, the interesting thing is going to be how much time should be on the shot clock. I did not see the ball hit the rim. I don't think it came close to the rim, rim Dan. Well, the shot clock is supposed to reset when it hits the rim or when there's a change of possession. And that was just a tremendous play by Calabria. It's possible that the shot clock operator just figured that Clemson was going to get the ball. At the top of the screen, as this ball it clearly doesn't hit the rim. They're going to post 14 on the shot clock now for North Carolina. 434 left in the contest. Tariels with the ball and a six-point lead. What an effort by Calabria to keep the possession alive, though. And they've got a mismatch if they want to post up Calabria. Shot clock to five. Calabria gets it away in time. Tough break. Williams. And the foul is going to be on Jamison. The shot clock runs down. Rick Barnes sees the North Carolina Tar Heels finally miss one, and they come up with the offensive rebound. Just tremendous scrappy effort by the Tar Heels. In fact, they missed two shots. They had the air ball that Calabria saved, and then Okalaja comes up with the tough rebound right there. Jamison picks up the foul against Shimon Williams, and now, of course, the shot clock does reset. Another 35 for the Tar Heels. They haven't missed often, but it's incredible how many second-chance points they've come up with, and especially Antoine Jamison. It's a big defensive series for the Clemson Tigers. Still a six-point ball game. McGinnis losing his footing. Calabria behind the free throw line. And Jamison over Jamison. This time it's Antoine falling Harold. Now Clemson 
will be in the bonus situation one and one time now for the Tigers. And Harold Jamison was at the free throw line regularly in the first 20 minutes of play. Goes there now. McGinnis continues to dribble the ball while he goes down. Calabria a little short with it. And, Her and Harold Jamison with good position on the inside. Now Harold Jamison goes down. Clemson missed their last field goal opportunity. These are two pretty big free throw opportunities for Jamison, but he's got to make the first to get the second. Five of eight, the stripe so far. And it's now five of nine. And McGinnis gets in front of the shooter to grab the one, loose one. Try to spread the court. See if maybe they can get Calabria posted up inside. Calabria against the smaller McIntyre. Leaves it for McGinnis, the three-point attempt. Jamison kept it alive. Antoine Jamison. Shaman Williams. And this time, Jerome McIntyre is fouled from behind by Calabria. Now, McIntyre will go to the free throw line. And with three minutes and 12 seconds left, these are almost must free throws for Clemson. North Carolina finally missing a couple of scoring opportunities. Clemson, if they're going to come back in the game, has to take advantage. That last foul on Antoine Jamison, his fourth. Calabria picking up his first foul. So now Zwicker on the bench with four. Antoine Jamison stays on the floor with four. four. And McIntyre, three of three so far at the stripe. Well, that's four potential points that they have given away, but they keep it alive. Yurkun is all alone, another three. Just short, Harold Jamison. Aggressive play all night long by Harold Jamison on the glass. That was a big basket for the Clemson Tigers, and now they've got to toughen up on the defensive end. North Carolina has shot the ball very effectively, but Clemson once again needs a defensive stop. McGinnis with a question regarding the ball. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Be right back for the final 246 with North Carolina by four. Joel Myers. All right, Reese, the wild, wild whack. And double overtime in that semifinal game. North Carolina up by four over Clemson, 246 left. Great effort by Calabria. And if North Carolina wins this game in large part, it'll be due to the kind of effort that they've given, and that's typical right there, Dante Calabria. Let's check in with Gary Danielson. Gary? Quick point, Clemson's still in this game. Remember, they've never beaten Carolina in an ACC tourney game, and they're, they're right in it. Shot clock at 15. McGinnis, nice head and shoulder fake, put Peril Jamison into the floor. Shot clock running down. Williams for three. That's Buckner with a rebound. The break is there for Harold Jamison, and he can't hold on. He stopped, and it was just off his fingertips. If he continues, it's right in the breadbasket. It's only the sixth turnover, though, for Clemson. Now they've got to get another defensive stop. Boy, you have to work so hard to get a defensive stop against the Tar Heels. When you do, you almost desperately need to convert it. McIntyre seemingly looking for the trap. It comes on Williams. Calabria moving well without the ball. Inside of 10 on the shot clock. The kick out. McGinnis for three. Zwicker after it. It goes to McIntyre. Still only a four-point lead for the Tar Heels. Timeout, Clemson. Minute 36 left. Clemson calls the timeout to set it up at the offensive end. Clemson trails by four, and this is an opportunity that they may look back on and regret. Buckner pitches it to head to Harold Jamison, who just can't hold on. And Buckner knows how important this is. Look at the reaction of Greg Buckner. Wow. They've also missed free throw opportunities as well. Clemson in the last two minutes has had that turnover, plus they've missed the front end of two one-and-one one opportunities. 
Both 20s are gone. Clemson calling the timeout. Has two remaining. Three for Carolina. And both teams in the one and one as the next foul. And Rick Barnes called that timeout to make sure that they get a good shot opportunity. This is an almost must-score situation for Clemson. Now McIntyre will start it up. 90 seconds left. The penetration. Available for three is Christie. Not close. Harold Jamison to the weak side. Count it. He'll go to the line looking for the three-point play. The foul on Okalaja. And Joel, the fact that it wasn't close is probably the key to the whole thing. It's an air ball. And because it's an air ball, Harold Jamison is not really in good position. Okalaja's got him blocked out, but when the ball doesn't hit the rim, it goes right into Jamison's hand. Rick Barnes, that may not be the way he drew it up, but it's the result that he wanted. Harold Jamison, 15 points. It stays at 15, and it comes right back to Clemson. They've got a chance to tie it or take the lead. 73-71, North Carolina. McIntyre beats Williams to the baseline. And Buckner will tie it up. Some serious elevation. Rick Barnes wanted a timeout. His team didn't get it. Inside of a minute, tied at 73. McGinnis can't believe it. McIntyre looking for some help. He doesn't want to be matched up against McGinnis. They make the switch. Shot clock inside of 15. Okalaja with a pick on Buckner. McGinnis has to hurry. Shot clock at three. McGinnis throws it throws away. away. Clemson with 26.6 seconds left, calls a timeout. North Carolina scoreless over the last five and a half minutes. Clemson comes back with a chance to win. With six straight points, the Clemson Tigers have tied the game, and the last basket, indicative of the way the Tigers have played in the last couple possessions, nobody blocks out Bunker, he, Buckner, he dunks it home. Rick Barnes now wants a timeout. His team does not see him. The Tar Heels get the ball inbounds, so Rick Barnes doesn't get the timeout, but defensively, a great job coming to help out. McGinnis throws the ball out of bounds. Clemson has gotten four key offensive rebounds in the last three and a half minutes. We'd like to welcome those of you who just joined us. Joel Myers along with Dan Bonner. Clemson with the ball. Inside of 25 seconds left. McIntyre knew the trap would be coming. And they will hold it for the last shot if they can, but North Carolina is going to get after him. McIntyre against McGinnis. Inside of 10 seconds left. Here we go. Calabria coming on the double team. They've got a wide open Buckner for the He's play. It. Six tenths of a second left. Time on North Carolina. Clemson didn't panic. Clemson does a great job. This is an outstanding pass, and Buckner comes up big once again. He's got two dunks in a row. Look at the expression on Rick Barnes' face. Just that believe. is priceless. That is absolutely priceless. Those eyes like a kid on Christmas morning. What a great play by McIntyre. Jamison sees the triple team, and Buckner just powers the ball up. There are six tenths of a second left in this game. And North Carolina has to go all 94 feet. The Tar Heels haven't scored in the last five minutes and 51 seconds. The Clemson defense has been outstanding down the stretch. Biggest assist of the young career of Harold Jamison. Last time they won, February, at Clemson. Five straight wins for North Carolina in the series, and they've taken 13 out of the last 14 from the Tigers. Now, six-tenths of a second left. You don't want to foul. Yeah. 
Your Kunis, the tall one, on the inbounds play. We'll keep it right here. Your Kunis at 6-9 to guard the inbounds pass. The Clemson coaching staff wanting to take a look to see what the North Carolina Tar Heels, what kind of offensive set they were going to use. Now Clemson calls a timeout to set what defense they want to employ. We talked about it very early in this contest. A win for Clemson tonight could lock up a spot. Many feel in the NCAA tournament. Take a look at the last basket as Clemson right there, the triple team against Jamison and Buckner just all alone inside. You know, when you beat a double team, oftentimes you get great shot opportunities, and that is simply a great pass by Harold Jamison and Buckner, the biggest two points of his life. Clemson wins. Are they in, Dan? I think that if Clemson wins this game and they've still got a long six tenths of a second <laughs> around here, they tell you that North Carolina is capable of all sorts of miracles. But if the Clemson Tigers win, I would think that it would be very, very difficult for the NCAA selection committee to overlook them. Clemson would face Wake Forest if they hold on with this two point lead. Maryland, Georgia Tech on ESPN. The other semifinal game tomorrow afternoon. It all begins at 1.30. Now, Carter with the inbounds play coming up. Your Kunis guarding it. You don't want to foul, but you want to make him throw the ball in as close to the end line as you can. Don't let him throw it to half court. Shaman Williams at the buzzer. And the Clemson Tigers have done it. Their 18th win of the season. Will it put them over the top and into the NCAA tournament? The first serious shock of this tourney, and let's head over to Gary Danielson. Gary. Rick, your team, Clemson, has never beaten North Carolina in the ACC tournament. A great win. I really, obviously, very proud of the way we kept our poise and came back. And uh, it's time that Clemson got a win in here, and it was great for our basketball team. Any doubt that this win puts you in the NCAA tournament? I don't think there's any question that this team should be in the NCAA tournament. But, again, we just got to keep going. A lot that's made about you and D before the game, but it was all basketball tonight. That's over and done with. We said that, and, again, it was a great basketball game. You, it, Black, you stopped them in the second half. They only scored 29 points. Well, we thought we gave up too many points off the offensive boards in the first half, gave up too many transition threes. We adjusted, and our guys, again, came out and had great points. Got enough energy for those freshmen to come back tomorrow. They're going to have to. They're <laughs> young. They can recover. Congratulations. All right, now. All right, Gary, and congratulations to Rick Barnes with the Clemson Tigers. North Carolina shut out over the final five minutes and 51 seconds. Clemson with the surprise, winning 75-73. Rick Barnes, your kids deserve it. For Dan Bonner, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us. Let's head back to the studio now and rejoin Reese Davis. Reese.